Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with a story about a petty revenge that happened back in 1987, in which we tell you about a video store employee in a Canadian border city who met a horrible customer. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Sorry, the banks are closed on Sundays. In 1987, my high school summer job was managing a video store in a Canadian border city. One Sunday, a man with a Michigan accent came in, wanting to buy a blank video cassette. He was dressed in expensive-looking clothes and was carrying his video camera, which I could see was a top-of-the-line model. We sold a similar model. Video cameras were big, bulky things in those days. You carried the camera on your shoulder, and a cable snaked down to the actual recording unit that you carried by a strap over your shoulder like a purse. He said he was attending his niece's birthday party and wanted to try out his new camera. I showed him three different blank tapes we sold, and naturally, he chose the most expensive. Me. That'll be X dollars, please. Snob show off, handing me a US 20. Wow, that's pretty expensive. Me. Our exchange rate is 10%. I'll have to give you back your change in Canadian money. W what? Why can't you just give me my change in American? This is Canada, sir. We use Canadian money here. And what's with only giving me 10% on American money? The banks are giving like 20%. We're not a bank, sir. I want to speak to your manager. You're talking to him. Who's your boss? The owner? Is he here? It's Sunday. He's probably at home. Get him on the phone. This is unacceptable. So I called the owner, Bernie. Our families have been good friends since before I was born. I explained the situation, how the gentleman in front of me wanted American change for his $20 bill and wanted a better exchange rate. Bernie, tell him to go F in his hat. You're not taking American money today. I hang up. The owner agrees, sir. The exchange rate is incorrect. SS gets a big old crap-eating grin on his smug face. Me. I'll call the bank first thing in the morning tomorrow and adjust our exchange rate accordingly. As for today, I can't accept American money. He gave me a puzzled look and his face dropped as he realized what I was telling him. Now understand, in 1987, there weren't many stores that were open on Sundays. This was before there was even a Walmart here. My shop was pretty much the only game in town to buy a blank tape that day. SS, now blustering, you're, you're not going to sell me a tape? I'm sorry, sir, I can't verify the exchange rate right now. I can take Canadian money, however. SS is visibly angry. I, I don't have Canadian money. He took out his wallet and threw an American Express gold card on the counter. I'm sorry, we only accept Visa and MasterCard. SS now has steam coming from his ears. I didn't bring my GD Visa with me. And I'm sorry, I can't help you today. All right, I'll go get some Canadian. I'll be right back. I smiled and said, I'll hold this tape for you. Oh, just to let you know, we close in 20 minutes. He stomped out in a huff. He never came back for the tape. I guess he couldn't find a convenience store to exchange his money in time. I love entitled people at stores. They make the best stories. And our second story. Office Appropriate Attire This was about five years ago. Setting the stage, I'd been with this massive global company, one of its manufacturing divisions, for about seven years. I was Tier 3 plus IT support, mostly behind-the-scenes stuff and online meetings with folks, on call as well. The guy who hired Steve, department director, was great. I was, and still am, a jeans and t-shirt guy. I've got like 200 plus silk screen tees, nothing offensive, but pleasantly entertaining. Steve decided to exit the corporate world. I didn't want his job, so massive global company found, hired a new director. Jay and I got along well, I thought, but then I started to see that he was intimidated by my skill set and ability to resolve issues with either a PowerShell script I already had or by a command line, very quickly fixing issues in a matter of seconds using methods that he could not understand. He was a GUI person. Jay started looking for things to discipline me for. Here we go. Jay decided that my wearing t-shirts was unprofessional. Me. What do you mean by unprofessional? Jay. It gives the impression to others that you don't respect them. And they don't think they can trust you to do your job correctly. Others who? Who thinks I can't do my job? Look, I'm not going to argue this. You need to come to work in office-appropriate attire, period. 
so I'm not capable of doing my job unless I'm wearing office-appropriate attire? Not allowed to do my job unless that's how I'm dressed? Jay, bluntly and dismissively, that's it. Then I need to add this kind of specific detail to this write-up. Yeah, he was putting it on paper. So I added that to my comment. Management determined, explained to me, and I now understand that I'm not able to perform my work-related tasks in a professional manner unless I'm wearing office-appropriate attire. Then for about three weeks, slacks and polo shirts. On a Friday night, I get a call at about 11.15 p.m. I'm on call. There's an issue affecting multiple production lines. None of the computers are connecting to the network. Can't print labels, blah, blah, blah. My plan comes into effect. Full circle ensues. I tell the production supervisor that I can't do anything about it. Really, I just needed to run a script that bounces DHCP on a domain controller, but I digress, because I'm not wearing office-appropriate attire. He knew what I was referring to, and all of my work clothes were at the dry cleaner, and then I'll pick them up on my way to the gym Monday morning. That blew up tremendously, as expected. And Jay calls me early Saturday morning, where I, bluntly and dismissively, tell him that this issue is his problem, not mine. He was the one that disciplined me and insisted that I was not able to do my job unless I was wearing office-appropriate attire, and that it's documented that I must be wearing office-appropriate attire in order to do my job, and that this will be happening on Monday morning after I pick up my clothes from the dry cleaner. Me. Your rules, buddy, not mine. Have a nice weekend, and tell me how to fix this. I'm not even wearing pants right now. Can't do work stuff. He angrily hangs up. Monday, I come in prepared for battle. With HR, Jay, and the plant manager in the same room, I spell out exactly how this is going to work. As best as I can recall, if you don't like this, let me know now. If you folks don't think I can do my job wearing a t-shirt and jeans after doing my job exceptionally well for seven years wearing a t-shirt and jeans, then this changes when Jay shows up. I promise you that what I'm wearing is not the problem. Jay is. If you see it otherwise, explain it to me. HR and plant manager. Huh? What? Me. HR, don't play stupid. You saw that write-up and you filed it accordingly. Plant manager. What? I explained the write-up to plant manager. Plant manager says that's the stupidest thing he's ever heard and ultimately blasts Jay and HR. Plant manager reassures me that this will never happen again, the write-up is garbage, and that if I have any other problems to let him know, he asks me to fix the production line issue. Pop up my laptop screen, log in, run a PowerShell script, and say, should be good in a few minutes. About six months later, I suspect that Jay was up to some unscrupulous stuff, and I found all kinds of proof in his email, sent that off to plant manager. Jay was terminated the next day. Edit. Wow, thanks for enjoying this. The building I was in is a separate building, a data center that can only be accessed by about a dozen people around the world. Only the front office has a dress code. Ignoring the obvious fact that no one should show up in ripped jeans or dress like a porn star, etc., jeans and a t-shirt were fine. Folks keep asking, Jay was terminated for embezzlement, buying equipment on company POs, then selling the equipment back to contractors at below cost, and keeping those funds. Then he was approving the invoices submitted by those contractors, and no one was the wiser. I'd been talking to one of the contractors who'd mentioned that they were surprised at how little they paid for the equipment, and I knew that the company bought that stuff. Huh? So I investigated. Jay had deleted the applicable emails to cover his tracks, but we have a 20-year email retention policy in place, so putting it all together was pretty easy. Gotta love having skill sets and knowing that if you ever get fired, there will be companies lined up with offers for you the next day. It means that you don't have to take crap from awful managers. And our last story. I inherited too much money from a second aunt in my father's family, and now several relatives are angry with me. This happened in mid-October of last year. I almost never saw my aunt, only on special occasions like weddings or Christmas, but whenever we saw each other, she and I got along very well. We'll call her S, referring to the first letter of her name. Unfortunately, in 2018, she was diagnosed with lung cancer, and that, together with some other health problems, she passed away. Sometime after her funeral, I was contacted by a notary to attend the reading of S's will, where I was mentioned. This surprised me and my family a lot because although S and I had a good relationship, it wasn't so much that she inherited something to me. 
S was a millionaire because in addition to being the owner of a series of clothing and accessory stores for women, I've understood that she was one of the owners and part of the majority partners of a well-known series of convenience stores throughout Mexico. I arrived to the reading of the will accompanied by my father. There were other relatives of S who were close to her. They looked at us horrible, especially me, but at first I smiled at them and tried to ignore them as long as I could. I was never close to them as they're rich from a long time ago. They're super entitled people and are not really nice people. The atmosphere was very uncomfortable. In summary, S inherited more than enough money for me to buy my own house, pay some debts, change my car, help my parents financially, and also give money to my maternal family who have some needs and I love them thousands of times so much more than most of my paternal family. When the close relatives of S know what she left me, they made a big scandal and told me that I would regret accepting money from S that according to them I did not deserve and other ugly things, but I defended myself very well. I honestly was never nice to S or got along well with her because of being interested in her money, expecting something in return. I really loved her, and not for her money. Nothing to do with that. Other close relatives of mine, almost all my paternal cousins and some uncles, were furious with me for receiving so much money from S. Almost all of them showed their true colors, which in a certain way hurt me because although I already knew that they were very special, I didn't think they would react as they did and I had a certain affection for them. The Third World War was made to me. It made me laugh that a cousin with whom I had never had any communication and we always ignored each other, when I received the money that M left for me, he approached me and tried to get something from me. He said something like, you should give me money because we're cousins, and I've always loved you even though we didn't talk to each other. WTF. Obviously, I didn't accept it and finished getting away from him, Two of S's close relatives tried to legally take money that I inherited, but they were unsuccessful, and luckily I've not heard from those crazy people. That's awful. I'm glad you stood your ground, and I'm sorry for your loss. S sounded like a cool lady. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.